Hey guys, Ryan here. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about something you might not have heard of before. And I wanna talk about where your thumb is positioned on your joystick. Now, please forgive me for this low quality video, but just listen to what I'm about to say. Take your thumb in front of you and put it at a 90 degree angle like you're seeing me right now, and then try and move it like you would if you were aiming. Then after you do that, I want you to tilt your thumb slightly up with a little angle and try and do the exact same thing. And what I found and what my friends have also found when I've had them try this is when you have your thumb at a slight tilt up, it's a lot easier to actually move it. And it's a lot easier to have control over the joystick. So for me, I kind of have my thumb positioned a little bit on the edge of my joystick. This has my thumb at an upward angle and this seems to give me the most amount of control. Now, I know that video was low quality. It wasn't the best quality video, yada, yada. I understand that. But the point I'm trying to get across is if you just try this yourself, I promise you're going to feel that in your thumb. It's not the most obvious difference, but I believe by locking your joint and locking it at a 90 degree angle, you're hindering your ability to get full control and actually aim the proper way. As well as making Call of Duty coaching content, I also coach high school football. So for me, I wanted to actually start thinking about the actual biomechanics behind aiming on controller and trying to explain more the actual physical way someone aims with their thumb and the joystick and all of that. And for me, one thing that you always need is flexibility. You do not want to be limiting your motion of control. You do not want to be limiting your ability to actually move. And I feel like by locking your joint at a 90 degree angle, you're doing exactly that. Now, I don't think this is going to magically make you a better aimer by instantly just moving your thumb a little bit. And I do also think that someone's hand size will play a factor into this as well as what type of joystick they're using. So I use a control freak on my joystick and I would recommend to use either a raised joystick or control freak. So this is going to make it a lot easier for me to have a raised angle on my joystick. I think for most people, if you don't have a control freak and you're not using raised thumb stick, it's going to be a lot harder for you by default not to have your thumb at a 90 degree angle and with the lock joint. I think the key thing is, is if you are using a default controller, you are going to have some level of this whole 90 degree thumb thing, and that's okay. You just have to be more flexible and try and find a way to get your joint as relaxed as possible. I think one thing a lot of people do is when they play, they start tensing up a lot. They get very tense. They start squeezing the controller, all these little things. I do it myself too. But when you tense up like that, it makes it harder for you to aim on a physical level. A lot of people really don't take time to consider the actual way they aim on a physical level, but it's way more important than you'd realize. And it's why I'd heavily recommend to use control freaks and a raised joystick or one or the other, not both, because the higher your joystick is, the more control you're going to have. And it's going to allow you to get better control because of this whole thumb angle thing I'm talking about. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the difference between controllers that are domed and controllers that are concave. So concave controllers are the default joystick on PlayStation and Xbox controllers. They're the ones that kind of go in in the middle and domed are obviously, you know, they're domed, they're round up top. And this actually is the thing that got me thinking about this because I was using my dome joystick with my PS5 Edge controller. And what I found was this is kind of uncomfortable. Because my thumb had to be positioned on top of the joystick, it felt like I had less control because my joint couldn't move and I just couldn't move my thumb properly. So once I switched back to the concave joystick, it instantly felt better and it's something I noticed almost instantly upon changing. Now, I do understand a lot of people don't even understand that there's even the option to have domed or concave joysticks. But if you buy a PS5 Edge controller, if you buy a third party controller, or if you get control freaks, you'll notice there is a difference and you will have the ability to choose between a concave and dome controller. And this doesn't mean dome controllers aren't good. It's all actually going to probably depend on your hand size and your controller size. But the key thing is, is you have to make sure your thumb is resting at an angle that sits comfortably with a little tilt up. As long as you have a little tilt up, it's going to give you flexibility. It's going to allow you to actually aim more freely. And that's what you're overall looking for when you go to aim. Now, I do want to say lastly, when I was really thinking about this video, it all starts because I've been playing a lot of mouse and keyboard shooters recently. And I haven't just been playing controller games. I've been playing a lot of Counter-Strike and Valorant and things like that. And one thing I noticed while playing is if you play on a high sensitivity, 
you use your wrist more than your arm on mouse. But if you're a low sensitivity aimer, you use your arm a lot. And if you're a controller player, everything I just said probably makes no sense. But the reason I'm talking about it is because at every level of aiming, whether you're talking about mouse and keyboard, like Counter-Strike, the very best of the best mouse and keyboard aimers, or whether you're talking about controller Call of Duty, the physical way you aim is super, super important to your success. And it's not something to just gloss over and not think it's not a big deal. I know there's not a lot of videos talking about these things. I know a lot of people don't talk about it in general, but I wanna start actually breaking down the actual physical way people aim because that is the key of having good aim. Once you physically have the skill to control your joystick in the ways you want it to, that's how you get good aim. Because you know what good aim is? It's having the ability to put your crosshair in your joystick where you want it to go to hit the shots you need to that's what having good aim is and that all stems from having the ability to control your joystick and that is something that starts by actually physically moving your thumb on the joystick anyways guys i just want to start wrapping this video up but i also just want to say thank you guys for watching this video I cannot wait for ranked because I feel like with ranked, there's gonna be so much coaching content to make and so many ways to help people. But until then, you know, I'm just gonna be playing, doing my thing, yada, yada. Anyways, guys, it's been Ryan. I hope you have a good day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.